Am I going to the lectern? Great. Okay. Please have a seat. Um, my name is Mike McCurdy and I have the great honour and privilege of being the President of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow and so welcome this evening to our diploma ceremony on the 16th of April 2024. The College was founded 425 years ago in 1599 by the gentleman whose portrait is here on this wall, Master Peter Lowe. As far as we know, he was born here in the city of Glasgow in about 1550. His birth is not recorded anywhere, but his brother and sister were certainly born in this city. And we do know that he travelled to Paris to become educated in the art and craft of surgery, without a medical degree in those days. He followed the Hippocratic <coughs> maxim that if you wanted to learn surgery at that time in the 16th century, you had to go to war. And so he went to Paris because Paris was at war in the wars of the religion of 16th century Europe. And he returned here in the late 1590s, having written the first textbook of surgery, the whole course of chirurgery or surgery in 1597. And at that time, this city of Glasgow had a population of about 5,000 people. We have more hospital beds than that now, 5,000 people. A small academic town, there was a university here, uh, the UK's fourth oldest university, founded in 1451 after Oxford, Cambridge and St Andrews. And there, so there was an academic interest in this small, quiet town on the banks of the Clyde. But there was no good system of medical practice. And he found medical practice in this city to be sorely wanting. And so he set about with colleagues forming this college. He petitioned James VI of Scotland, who became James I of Great Britain and Ireland in 1603. But he petitioned him when he was still King of Scotland alone to grant him a royal charter by which this institution, at that time called the Faculty of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow, would regulate the profession and set standards for medicine and surgery. And so we've been doing that for the last 425 years. And tonight we're going to admit several of you uh, here to the college. So welcome all of you who are going to become new fellows and members of the college. Welcome to all of your supporters and families and friends sitting behind you. And I hope you enjoy being here. The college is now a worldwide institution in over 100 countries across the globe, and we have more than 16,000 fellows and members in all disciplines. We're a very colourful bunch, as you can see, very beautifully demonstrated to my left here, <coughs> with all our different colours, because we're a multidisciplinary college, not just of physicians and surgeons now, but also of dentists and specialists in travel and podiatric medicine. So welcome, and we look forward to welcoming all of you into our college community this evening. I'm going to start, though, by asking uh, John Scott, uh, Vice President of Surgery, to come here to the lectern and introduce Professor Laura Vianney, who is the recipient of tonight's Honorary Fellowship of the College. And I'll ask Professor Vianney to come and stand here centre stage with me. You come on up here, uh, Laura, and we'll let John take over here at the lectern. And we're uh, going to bring, first of all, before all of you, an honorary fellow into the family of the College. Uh, good evening. Uh, President, College Council, fellows, members, ladies and gentlemen. It's my enormous pleasure to present Professor Laura Viani for, 
the award of honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow. Professor Laura Viano is currently president of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. She's consultant otolaryngologist and neurootologist to the Beaumont Hospital and the Temple Street University for Children in Dub Dublin. Honorary associate professor at the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland and honorary adjunct professor, Trinity College, Dublin. A graduate of Trinity College, she pursued her otolaryngology career training in Dublin, Manchester and Liverpool and was appointed to the consultant Beaumont Hospital in 1993. Professor Viani is the recipient of many prestigious awards, including Honorary Fellowship of the American College of Surgeons in 2022 and the Outstanding Contribution to Irish Medicine Award in 2023. Of the 130 invited lectures she presented include the eponymous uh, Toynbee Lecture at the Royal College of Society of Medicine, London. Now, Toynbee was an English otologist who cured Queen Victoria of her deafness by syringing her ears. His untimely death came when he was 50 years of age after accidentally inhaling prussic acid and chloroform in what was thought to be an experiment to test a remedy for tinnitus. Fortunately, Professor Viani's academic career has been far more successful and with greater longevity. Her favourite quote is, the best way to pre predict your future is to create it by Abraham Lincoln. Now, Professor Viani has pursued this truism with enthusiasm, dedication, technical and academic genius, seeking improved health care for both Ireland and internationally. Firstly, in 1993, she co-founded the Acoustic Neuroma and Skull Base Programme in Ireland. Following this, Professor Viani recognised the absence of a service for profoundly deaf children and adults in the Irish state. At this time, over 90% of children born with profound hearing loss did not learn to use oral speech, and most of them did not have the opportunity to attend mainstream school. Determined to resolve this healthcare inequality, she undertook fellowships in skill-based surgery in Cambridge and in neurotology in Zurich before returning to Ireland in 1995 to perform Ireland's first cochlear implant. Thereafter, Professor Viani established the Republic of Ireland's first and only cochlear implant programme in 1995. This has grown to become the National Hearing Implant and Research Centre, of which she is the director with a multidisciplinary team of over 30 professionals caring for children and adults with severe to profound hearing loss. To date, Laura and her colleagues have performed over 2,000 cochlear implants. This gift of hearing has allowed many of these people to fully integrate into society, participate in school with hearing children, excel at work and maintain independence into their old age. She also works closely with both patient advocates and the Department of Health. This culminated in the CPL World Class Talent Series Award, recognising Professor Viani as an outstanding global leader who has made a meaningful contribution to Ireland's economy and society. Teaching and training has been central to Professor Viani's career. Past president of the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland Students of Surgical Society, she also established the International Fellowship Programme in Neuroautology. Eight fellows have gone back to their own countries to establish programmes of their own with her continued support. She supervised numerous PhD students and research projects, and in addition to her own, own work and that of her team, have been the basis of over 130 publications. Notably, alongside such a stellar academic and surgical career, Professor Viana remains exceptionally humble and caring. Her close colleague, Professor Carl Kelly, remembers recently upon hearing that a relative of an RCI staff member was suffering in health, she invited them to tea in the President's office. A most memorable moment for the individual and a wonderful gesture of kindness. Her colleague, Professor Arnold Hill, recommends Prof Professor Viani's adept interactions with government and health service managers in support of her colleagues and the furtherment of patient health care. Professor Viani's underlying philosophy, and my favourite quote of her, is just do the right thing. I'm delighted today that she's joined by her husband Tom, 
an eminent esophageal surgeon. Together, they've supported each other through their illustrious careers. In conclusion, Professor Laura Viani is the epitome of an inspirational surgeon and leader, combining preeminence in surgery and research with visionary leadership. President, may I ask you to grant the award of honorary fellowship of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow. Professor Laura Viani, by the prior invested in me by the Council of the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow, it is my great pleasure to confer upon you the honorary fellowship and surgery of our college. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you have to sign the book now. Oh. So, just above your name, there you are. Just actually. Thank you, John, and thank you, Laura, for being with us this evening. I'm going to move now to ask um, Marvin McElroy, Honorary Secretary of the College, to come to the podium, and uh, we'll begin our admission ceremony for new fellows and members. Marvin, yeah. I'll swap seats with you. Yeah. So you need to stay up. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you all to Glasgow. Um, and but first of all, I've got a more important matter of the oath. So I'd like all new fellows and members who are able to please stand in preparation to take the oath of allegiance to the college. Do you solemnly and sincerely declare that you will be faithful fellows and members of this college, obey all laws, regulations and bylaws made and to be made by the college and will do nothing which in the opinion of the college is prejudicial to the interest of or derogatory to the honour of the college or your profession. Amen. Sarah prepared you well. <laughs> you can now sit. Thank you. I would now like to ask Dr Richard Hull, you're over there Richard, um, to start um, with the diplomas to all the new medical fellows and members as follows. For the fellowship qua physician, that's FRCP Glasgow, we have Sandip Agarwal. <laughs> Yusuf Ansari. Malik Anas Rabani. <laughs> Pajan Viel Ranganadan. <laughs> we now move to membership of the college, MRCPS Glasgow. Umar Kaleem. <laughs> MRCP UK. Sharon Chandrakan. <laughs> Obina Alexander Chukwa. Karim Iliadi, <laughs> Lauren Hookham, <laughs> Mayan Omar Eftikar, <laughs> Mohammed Attar Iqbal Khan. Mohammed Mohammed <laughs> Carla Swanson Lowe <laughs> I 
would like to thank Richard and I'd now like to ask our Vice President of Surgery, John Camille Rubenin, to come and present um, the diplomas to all the new Surgical Fellows and members as follows. I'll let the President get a drink first of all. <laughs> uh, for the Intercollegiate Specialty Fellowships in General Surgery, FRCS Glasgow General Surgery, we have Peter Gordon Alexander. <laughs> Gillian McCall. <laughs> um, for ultralaryngology, there's a mouthful. FRCS Glasgow Oral HNS. We have Karana Krishna Rao. <laughs> we now have Fellowship Quest Surgeon FRCS Glasgow by election, Dipak Kumar Nag. Nirmal Kumari Venkatur Mamajam. We have Fellowship Quest Surgery in Ophthalmology, FRCS Ophthalmology Glasgow, Sumali Deb. Hetty Patarane Helagi, Mudurhanga, Kasun Gunawardena. <laughs> now moving on to membership, Kwa Surgeon MRCPS Glasgow. We have Lucia Margaret Damascio. <laughs> Asma Ahmed Yaya Hassan. Anthony Pillai Ravikaran Georgia Rutherford I would like to thank John and now I'd like to ask the um, Dean of De uh, Vice President of Dental Surgery, um, Christina, uh, Christine Goodall, to come um, and to give the diplomas to all new dental fellows and members as follows. For the Intercollegiate Specialty Fellowship in Oral Medicine, FSCS OM RCPS Glasgow, Melanie Louise Sims. Restorative Dentistry, FDS Restorative Dentistry, RCPS Glasgow, Jamie Daniel Robert Dickey. <laughs> For the Fellowship of the Faculty of Dental Surgery, FDS RCPS Glasgow, Zora Jabin. For the membership of the Faculty of Dental Surgery, MFDS, RCPS Glasgow, Ben Dixon. <laughs> Mohammed Shahid. <laughs> Sumaya Siv. We now have the UK Dental Elective Award, which is presented to Christy Fee. I'd like to thank Christine and I'd like to ask our representative from the Travel Medicine Board, Claire Walker, to come and present the diplomas to the new Travel Medicine Fellows and members as follows. For the membership of the Faculty of Travel Medicine, MFTM, RCPS Glasgow, and the Postgraduate Diploma in Travel Medicine, that's the longest one yet, Dejang <laughs> <laughs> <Dejan> Yang. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you, Claire. Um, I'd now like to ask um, Debbie Wilson, who's representing podiatric medicine faculty, to present the diplomas to new fellows and members as follows. For the Fellowship in Podiatric Medicine, FFPM, RCPS Glasgow, G. Spector. That now concludes all of the admissions. Um, I'm going to hand back to the President for his address. So thank you very much indeed, Morvan, and congratulations to all of you here in these front rows. As the Honorary Secretary read out your name and you came up onto the stage and met me and whoever was giving you your diploma, everybody applauded. And that is right and proper because you all deserve that applause. Um, those of you who put yourself up in front of the examiners have set yourself a very stern and difficult test. Um, all of you have come through, whether in medicine or surgery or dentistry, travel medicine, podiatric medicine, you set yourself a high bar to say, I am going to become a member or fellow of the college. And that has involved sacrifice, coming home at night, studying, turning on desk lamps and laptops when you'd rather turn on the telly. And we acknowledge that in applauding you this evening, and you deserve that. There are, though, some other people here this evening who also deserve some applause, and they are the people sitting behind you here who have supported you in your careers to date, whether they be mums and dads or brothers and sisters, husbands and wives, children. All of them have also supported you. And so in what's become a tradition for our college, I'm going to ask you to join with me in standing up our new diplomats and turning round and thanking those who have supported you to this stage in your career. And a few waves. There you are. Some board, board guys who are doing very well. So, Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Glasgow, as I said, founded 425 years ago. We're one of 24 Royal Colleges in the United Kingdom and Ireland, and we work together through the Academy of Medical Royal Colleges, and our main purpose is not just in setting exam standards for you to, to throw yourselves at and to try and pass and clear that hurdle, but also in education, in ensuring that you are learning and you have sound knowledge and practice. Knowledge is a very difficult thing for us in medicine these days. In 1950, it took 50 years for the sum of medical knowledge to double. In 2020, it took 73 days for that same quantum of knowledge to double. So as all of you know, it's not possible to know everything about medicine or surgery or dentistry or travel medicine or podiatric medicine. And what you've been tested about in your exams is not just your knowledge, whether you've learned enough, but how you are able to dis use that knowledge in patient care, your application of that knowledge, and your understanding of other skills like communication and explanation to patients and families. And so we've tested all of that in admitting you as fellows and members. And we do that together with the other colleges across the UK. Some of those colleges have one discipline to deal with. Um, for example, the Royal College of Psychiatrists, some of those colleges were founded like us in the Middle Ages, some of them more recently the Royal College of Anistas in 1992, but all have the same endeavour to try and maintain standards and set standards of knowledge and education and training across all our disciplines. We are a multidisciplinary college and we can see that reflected in the colours of gowns this evening, the yellow and green and cerise, purple, blue, green, whatever we have the different colours. And that actually goes right back to the very beginning of our college. Beside Peter Lowe here are Robert Hunter and William Spang. Robert Hunter was a physician and William Spang was an apothecary or pharmacist. And so right back in the, our origins, it was not just about one specialty. And we all know in our practice of medicine these days that multidisciplinary working is a really important part of what we do, whether that's in my specialty in breast cancer or whether it's in cardiology or care of the elderly or any discipline we pursue, we have to work with other people in multidisciplinary teams. 
And on a good day, that's really quite straightforward. Everybody's feeling well and happy and everybody gets on well in the team. But uh, there are difficult and challenging days. And what we know through the COVID period of time in particular is that some of those challenges become writ a bit larger. And if we look across our workforce in the health service in the UK, we know that many are exhibiting behaviours of not being very well themselves. And so one of our asks to you in the college is to look after your own well-being and to try and make sure that you stay well so that you can deliver good and safe care. And we have lots of tips and tricks. We've expanded this book so that I can't fit it in my pocket anymore. But the earlier edition was this little handy pocket-sized version. And downstairs you'll find now our expanded journal of well-being. And those of you who are familiar with this will know that there are five key pillars to well-being. The first one is to connect and to connect with other people. You're here this evening connected with friends and families. Think of your opportunity to connect with us as the college. One day you might be one of the examiners who you put yourself up against recently. You might be an educator, you might help us in our public policy work. It might be that this is a community that you want to be an active participant in. That's one way of connecting. But your friends, your families, your neighbours, your work colleagues. Because the US Surgeon General has calculated that loneliness, which is a subjective feeling of an individual of not being supported or being alone, is as bad for our health as smoking 10 cigarettes every day. So don't allow yourselves to be alone. Be connected to everybody else around about you. Take notice of the world around about you. There's a lovely room here and a lovely building. It doesn't all have to be blue spaces or oceans or beautiful mountains or rivers. You can take notice wherever you are. Take notice of the world around about you. Notice that. Breathe a little. That's very important for your well-being. Remember to go on learning. Terrible thing to say to people who have just sat an exam, but you have to go on learning. You know that in medicine, but don't just learn about medicine. Pursue some other interests, read, pursue hobbies, things that will sustain you in your careers. And be active, be active people. Whether that's keeping fit or going for a walk or whatever, just be active. We know that that's very important. And the last of these five pillars is a really difficult concept, which is to give. And that seems quite counterintuitive because, as I mentioned earlier, we're not all very well in the medical workforce just now. By the time we came out of COVID, perhaps 40%, even up to 50% in some surveys, of the whole NHS workforce was exhibiting signs of anxiety and depression because we were stressed by the work as we came out of COVID. And that's not necessarily got better because we're now dealing with backlogs, unhappy patients, here in the UK, where there used to be a warm reception, if you said you were a doctor or a dentist or a podiatrist, specialist in travel medicine, people respected you in dentistry. Huge challenges in the delivery of dentistry across the UK just now. And so the people we meet as patients are not starting from a happy position. They're often having started having waited a long time to come and see you. They are increasingly anxious about their health because they've had it put on pause from when they met somebody in primary care who referred them to come and see you. So remember that the people you're meeting are not in the best of health either, but you need to give to them. And that, unfortunately, all the academic evidence is that by making an effort to give, we will be better ourselves. So an important aspect of your well-being is to give. And tonight we've had a tremendous example of giving in Professor Laura Vianney, as outlined by John Scott, our Surgical Vice President. What a career, what an effort to give more to the people in the Republic of Ireland now in Dublin, but previously in her career here in the UK and the US and elsewhere. To innovate, yes, we recognise that, and many of these people around the walls here on the walls were innovators in their day. And then we recognise their innovation. But what we forget is all the effort that was involved in that, all the giving of themselves, all the meetings that were involved in often persuading other people to do things that they don't really want to do. That's how you innovate. But what Laura Vianney has done in her career is not just innovate and have a good idea, she's maintained that and she has developed that national service in Dublin for cochlear implant surgery. And that takes resilience and energy and consistency. And so that's back to your 
own well-being, you will not be able to innovate, you will not be able to deliver good care, you will not be able to be resilient in your careers unless you make that effort to look after yourself. So please do that. But what a tremendous example of giving we've had here this evening. One of the things our college has been talking about is inclusivity. And I'm sad to say that round this room, every single one of these fellows on the wall is an elderly white man. Not a great example, is it? Our colleagues in the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland were the first college to elect a woman as the president, Eilish McGovern. Laura Vianney is the second female president, and in a couple of months' time, she'll hand on to the third, Debbie McNamara. What a great example to the rest of us of being an inclusive community in the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. 1912, we admitted as a college our first female fellow. And if you were all to come back here in June, I hope we will have her portrait on the wall by then. Jamini Sen, who graduated in Calcutta in 1897, made her way to Europe and trained in Dublin. So there's a nice connection to our first female fellow. Actually had her surgical education in Dublin before she came to present herself here for the exam. And previous attempts to become a fellow of the college as a woman had been turned down. And we know that those decisions were made in this very room here. The College Council said, no, we can't be having with any of these women being part of our community. But Jamini Sen got round all of that by passing the exam. And nobody could deny her entry at that point. So well done to all of you who've passed your exams. We wish you flourishing, happy, fulfilling careers. Remember those five pillars. Remember to stay connected to all these lovely people you're with tonight. Maybe I suggest you become connected, more connected with this, your college. Remember to notice the world round about you. Remember to keep learning, be active and to give. And one last happy thought is up here in our college crest. We have two mottos. These days with these five pillars of well-being and there's catchphrases here and there. Our predecessor didn't have that. They had a bit of Latin and a coat of arms. And the very top part is conjurat amici, which is from the Latin poet Horace in the first century AD. Conjurat amici means together in friendship. And I hope all of you new fellows and members of our college will feel that friendship of our college community. And you are very welcome tonight as new fellows and members. And we hope that you will remain with us together in friendship throughout your careers. And the bottom motto, we have two mottos. Most people just have one, we've got two. Non vivere sed valeri vita is a martial, uh, the um, Middle Ages um, epigrams they were called. So uh, to try and capture a truth in a few words. Non vivere sed valeri vita, which means it's important not just to live, but to live well. And in that, I hope your careers in medicine, surgery, dentistry, travel medicine and podiatric medicine sustain you and give you great careers. And remember whether none of us, none of the rest of us in this room are going to achieve what Professor Laura Viani did in our career. Maybe some of you are, but most of us aren't. But we can still be the very best doctor the very best dentist, the very specialist in travel medicine or podiatric medicine, when we're in that room with that patient, give your very best of your knowledge and skills, your kindness, your empathy, and give the very best you can in your careers. And if you do that, I very much hope you will have long, happy, sustaining careers. Thank you very much for being with us this evening. So we're now going to process out, which means you all have to stand up again, because this, the mace, will be carried out. So we'll ask you all to stand, and we'll ask David to come forward and take the mace, and we'll process out. And then refreshments will be served downstairs in the crush hall.